నమస్తే వెల్కమ్ టు టీ సార్ స్పెషల్ లైవ్ షో ఈరోజు గురుకుల మెయిన్స్లో భాగంగా ఇంగ్లీష్ పేపర్ టూకి సంబంధించి అసలు ఇంగ్లీష్లో ఎన్ని రకాల టెస్ట్లు ఉన్నాయో అవేంటి వాటి గురించి మనకి ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేయడానికి ఎప్పటిలాగానే అంబర్ శ్రీనివాస్ గారు మనతో ఉన్నారు పరిచయం చేసుకుందాం నమస్తే అండి అంబర్ శ్రీనివాస్ గారు ఇంగ్లీష్లో గురుకుల మెయిన్స్కి సంబంధించి మనం కొన్ని రకం కొన్ని రోజులుగా లైవ్స్ చేస్తూ ఉన్నాము అయితే ఈరోజు ఇంగ్లీష్లో ఎన్ని రకాల టెస్ట్లు ఉన్నాయి ఫస్ట్ అసలు అవేంటి అనేది ఒకసారి చెప్తారా so with greetings to the viewers and best wishes to them for their good preparation for the examination today as part of our discussion we are going to discuss some texts that we have for our mains examination in english we have uh, poetry texts and prose texts as well as dramas in poetry we have around 18 poems for our examination and similarly we have 14 prose lessons and uh, six plays overall we have 38 texts for this examination uh, this is a you know little difficult task for us to you know work on this after being studying the background <coughs> of victorian you know poets authors essays then we must plan our preparation on you know these topics because as i already said 38 topics you know, we may we must be thorough with and then we will this is for your information because we need to plan according to the syllabus and uh, it would be little difficult for us to understand these texts and we have less time and uh, english as such is a difficult subject for majority of the candidates who are preparing for this examination that's what we observed when whenever they interacted with us so keeping that in mind uh, we are trying our level best to help and guide the candidates maybe we cannot focus on everything and i repeat after these programs we must uh, prepare on our own we must spend some extra time to prepare because it's a typical subject okay then in today's topic <coughs> we'll you know take some text from poetry then we'll just observe how to interpret them how to analyze them why should we do it because in the examination we are going to get direct questions from these texts as well first part is background of the poets and authors we'll get some questions and then we'll get another question another type of questions on their works for example romantic uh, you know, poets and uh, victorian poets their works we must also have a list of those things and little knowledge about these door uh, sorry their uh, major works important works then third is this text so we can categorize our topic of mains this topic into three background of you know authors and their works third selected text for this examination ee mood rakala ga prepare kavali ipudu so andulo we'll try to spend some time on some text poetic text in the previous episode we just uh, had a look at Uh, a poem written by sarojini naidu but uh, we could not you know analyze that let us try our level best to analyze uh, the poem written by <coughs> sarojini naidu which is nothing but in the bazaars of hyderabad sarojini naidu you know lived in hyderabad studied in hyderabad apart from studying abroad and uh, having been spent uh, her major part of life in hyderabad she wrote on hyderabad lifestyle as well so in this poem as we could understand from the title most of the times the title will explain about the theme here the theme is very clear that's the the speciality of sarojini naidu in the bazaars of hyderabad so we can easily understand here she is going to talk about the bazaar lifestyle of hyderabad how the bazaars were in that particular period 
now there is a drastic change and uh, let us look at this as we already discussed that a poem will have two forms external form and internal form external means number of stanzas number of lines and if it has a rhyme scheme three things so if it has a rhyme scheme you will get a question on it this is one part then second part is what exactly the poet is trying to convey through her or his poem there will be a specific theme a subject what is that subject and what do we get to our mind when we look at a particular poem what kind of ideas we get are the questions that we should get in mind when we look at a poem and in the previous episode we discussed poetry is a wonderful tool to help us in developing our imaginative power creative thinking critical thinking as well so even to improve someone's communication skills poetry will surely help to a maximum extent apart from the language elements now let us just look at the stanza that we can see it on the screen as well there are six uh, lines there first line is a question what do you sell of merchants so the poet here is asking so it's in a in a question mode a discussion mode okay that is another specific quality of sarojini naidu if you can think of indian weavers another wonderful poem written by sarojini naidu that was also in the mode of a conversation asking a question to the weavers and the answer so that's a particular style so in the examination we will get questions based on our understanding what do we understand from the poem the writing style and the thematic point as well so we must look at these things too so here the poet is asking the merchants what is that they are selling and uh, another point is richly your wares are displayed all you know the clothes different kinds of clothes they were displaying so hyderabad as we all know is also popular for you know clothes sarees dresses so sarojini naidu rightly pointed out this topic to start with she was asking the merchants what is that you are displaying and how many colors how many items of cloth you are displaying are they under turbans of crimson and silver different colorful turbans and the tunics of purple brocade is another kind of a cloth expensive cloth and mirrors with panels of amber different kinds of stone works which is again a popularity of hyderabad city being a typical hyderabadi she chose the typical picture of hyderabad here in this and daggers with handles of jade another precious stone jade ante telusu manaku stone very precious stone daggers lo kuda avi kuda amme vallu shops lo and even today in old city if you go you will get all these kinds of decorative you know daggers and decorative works and dresses so here by asking the merchants the poet sarojini naidu is mentioning what is very special in hyderabad as, as far as merchants are concerned and uh, we have a artistic work of sarojini naidu in depicting this lifestyle of merchants by taking different colors that's another speciality of you know uh, sarojini naidu and a little background of sarojini naidu will help us about her writings as well as understanding her poem so different colors different items in the first stanza and uh, we could also observe from the you know poem that certain last words have been underlined and if we observe there is a rhyme scheme too first line third line and sixth line they have you know rhyming pattern second line and fourth line silver and amber they have writing patterns that means not only a wonderful theme but uh, she used uh, all the writing aspects of a poem 
it ha it is a, we can say it is a full form of a poem well knit poem and if you go to the next uh, stanza what do you weigh o oh vendors now from merchants poet has moved to vendors who are selling some items what are they selling which is again a popular you know business in hyderabad so she observed the typical business lifestyle of hyderabad and she had put it on paper so that the history the generation can read and understand real hyderabad and examples of these vendors and their products is saffron lentil and rice different items saffron is we use and the rice items what do you grind or oh maidens maidens are working what are they doing sandalwood and uh, and spice maybe maidens are grinding sandalwood for a special purpose and henna mehndi in other words we call it as and spices this again typically talks about the lifestyle in those days people used to do everything at home too now we get everything ready made that also talks about that and what do you call oh peddlers peddlers means people who sell particular items small time vendors on cycles they go from street to street to sell some items what are they selling any question and there is an answer to chessman ivory dice different small items valuable items common items they selling so this again is is a you know typical picture of description of hyderabad you know city and the here you have all you know fragrant items here like sandalwood saffron and uh, spices so many items here and uh, another observation here is here also in this stanza we have rhyme scheme second line fifth line sixth line have a rhyme scheme like rice spice and dice we took small c to depict this and then third line and fifth line also have a rhyme pattern maidens and peddlers depicting then the other stanza that we have is what do you make o oh, goldsmiths now from merchants vendors peddlers maidens to goldsmith again this is this has a specific you know feature uh, of goldsmiths in hyderabad and what are they making the answer is what they are doing busily working on is wristlets anklets and ring gold and silver items like bracelets we in general english we call it as you know bracelets wristlets so even we find these articles from goldsmiths in hyderabad that's what the poem is trying to depict and bells for the feet of blue pigeons and uh, those days even they used to decorate the pigeons with uh, the bells the metal bells and frail as dragonfly's wing a very light and girdles of gold for dancers waist bands golden waist bands and scabbards for of gold for the king scabbards means here we can see the meaning also the cover for the swords the sheath you have a leather sheath and also other metal metallic ones so these goldsmiths are busy making wristlets anklets rings bells for the pigeons and uh, girdles of gold for the dancers and uh, covers for the swords of different uh, metals and materials this clearly says another lifestyle of goldsmiths in hyderabad which is very popular which made hyderabad very popular city and in this stanza also as we could see there is a rhyme scheme too second line fourth line and the sixth line they have a rhyme scheme which was underlined ring wing king and we have taken small d to represent uh, this uh, rhythmic pattern rhyme scheme and third line and uh, you know fifth line pigeons and dancers has some kind of a sound pattern then in another stanza we are taking this uh, poem to understand how do we interpret the poem externally and internally and i hope the viewers the candidates will take up other poems because i don't know whether we can discuss all the poems you know in the show 
we are taking few poems as sample actually. So we need to do it in our free time. The third uh, next stanza is, what do you cry, O oh, fruit men, citron, pomegranate and plum. And here next uh, seller is fruit men. What is he crying to sell? Citrus fruits, pomegranate and plum, different fruit items he is selling, which is another speciality of Hyderabad city. Hyderabadis uh, are fond of you know fruits you find, especially nowadays if you go to old city, you will find that uh, old culture of Hyderabad still which is alive, whereas in the new cities you find a different lifestyle. So this poem gives us a typical picture of you know Hyderabad of those days. And another important point here is, as we discussed in the previous episode, a poem will also give us some images. We can ima get the image of Hyderabad of those days. And uh, the next uh, question from the poet to magicians, what do you play, O oh, magicians, spells for iron to come? The magicians, they are also pop they were also popular in Hyderabad those days. So with wonderful spells, magical spells, they used to enact. So this again talks about the typical Hyderabadi lifestyle. So as a poet, Saraj Naidu observed <coughs> Hyderabadi lifestyle as far as the merchants, vendors, fruit men, magicians, goldsmiths are concerned. And then very beautifully, you know, verbally she depicted in this poem. And in another stanza, which has three lines, what do you weave, O oh, flower girls? Now weavers, not cloth weavers, here flower girls, they are weaving something. What are they doing? With tassels of azure and red, crown for the brow of a bridegroom. They are weaving flower, you know, <coughs> tiara kind of a thing using different flowers, a crown kind of a thing, like crown of flowers. Then apart from that, chaplets to garlands his bed, sheets of white blossoms new garnered to perfume the sleep of the dead from celebrations. Flowers are used in celebration as well as in the death ceremonies too. So this is another speciality of Saraj Naidu. In her simpler way of poetic style, she discusses the whole philosophy of life, the birth, the beginning, the end, the death and celebration of life in every aspect is beautifully, wonderfully depicted in her every poem. So when we read Saraj Naidu, I think we can understand not only human life, but Hyderabadi life because she was in Hyderabadi, major part of her life she lived in Hyderabad. So that's another aspect to understand real Hyderabad in her terms, you know, we must read. So we must appreciate the examiners for adding one poem written by, you know, Saraj Naidu here. So we, m after understanding the poem, we must try to raise some questions on our own. What kind of a question they would, you know, raise? Are there any imageries, metaphors, symbols and all? And another suggestion here is maybe one or two lines from the poem can be given and uh, can be asked uh, about what exactly these <coughs> lines convey. And uh, for the help of our viewers, here we could just have a glossary of difficult words. You know, the tassels is a string tied as decoration. In decoration, we will find some kind of strings with the flowers or other decorative material. Azure is bli bright blue shade. So as poet Saraj Nadu uses all wonderful colors of, you know, our life, then shaflets are nothing but circles of flowers and leaves to be worn on head like tiara. In, you know, Miss India, Miss Universe competitions, we'll find uh, metal tiaras. So shaflet is nothing but a tiara made of flowers. 
beautiful flowers, colorful flowers. And another little analysis is this particular poem has five stanzas and uh, five stanzas has six lines in each and a fourth stanza, fifth stanza has this and this kind of an analysis will help actually. Just uh, look at the stanza, stanzas, number of lines and rhyme scheme because maybe we might get a question on it. What is the significance of this number of you know, stanzas and lines as well? We must understand this. Then after discussing great poet of India, Sarajan Naidu's poem, let us try to discuss another poem by Robert Louis Stevenson, which is prescribed for our examination. My Shadow, it is a wonderful poem actually. As we have been discussing, poetry will not only make us happy, but will also make us think, think deeper, so that our thinking capacity grows. And this particular poem, if you can look at the first uh, part of it, it is in the beauty of this particular poem is it is in simple language, simple words. Sometimes we have poems which have uh, difficult words. Here one suggestion is please do not bother about the vocabulary in the poem. And as we discussed in our previous episode that a poem can be understood and enjoyed at the twentieth reading. A poem cannot be easily understood at the first reading, that the typicality, complexity of a poem. So here in this poem, My Shadow, we have a simple language. If you can look at these lines, I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me. See how wonderfully a common situation is depicted in this poem. I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me. That means this shadow is following this man. Yes, shadow follows us wherever we go. It is inseparable. Second line says, and what can be the use of him is more than I can see. And the use of it only I know. Without me, there is no meaning for that. So we are inseparable. He is very, very like me from the heels up to the head. Another wonderful observation about our shadow. Everyone's shadow will resemble their own personality. Though shadow is not colorful, beautiful, but the poet here, Stevenson here, has you know, extracted beauty in the shadow. And we should also appreciate Stevenson for, for this you know, theme because poets, authors, writers will focus on what others do not focus on, what others miss, what others do not understand. That is the beauty of authors and poets. So shadow this me. He is very, very like me from the heels up to the head. He shadow the same nalage It will be generally. And I see him jump before me when I jump into my bed. That means whenever I move, whenever I do one activity, my shadow is also doing it. Here, in a poetic form, in literary form, shadow, not simply physically shadow, but what actions you do, what message you convey to the world. So every personality has a shadow effect on others. And uh, that uh, observation about others is a right observation about us. That is another beautiful you know, interpretation we could get from this shadow here. You do not have any separation there. So people observe and create a particular image about you. Your physical shadow is what you see, whereas the other kind of a shadow is what people see in you. Atla, oka poem lo we will find uh, different kinds of layers and interpretations. It has, it goes beyond 
the page beyond the stanza, beyond the vocabulary. That's the power of poetry. And then another a part of this poem, if you can look at. The funniest thing about him is the way he likes to grow. Another quite interesting. And if you can observe, shadow sometimes it changes its uh, you know size based on the time of the day, lighting of the situation. Again, that means your name and fame will sometimes grow and will sometimes condense. It talks. Sometimes people get a lot of popularity, sometimes they will not get. So, the poet here used uh, the imagery of shadow to talk about our personality. Andhra Chudra. The funniest thing about uh, him is the way he likes to grow. He likes to grow. Actually, shadow does not have its own individuality. It depends totally on me. Yes or no? So, people's observation is about us, right? We cannot say, I did, I'm not, I did not do that. Then, not at all like proper children, which is always very slow. And the shadow would grow, not like children. Children do not grow. And where the children's growth is slow, but here the growth is sometimes drastic. And so, it also talks about the growth about that person. For he sometimes shoots up taller, like in India, rubber ball. In the quick ga untundi a growth, a expansion of shadow, a tallness of shadow ante, Indian rubber ball, it will kodite a ball, atla, in the energy to kodite anta energy to bite kostundi, leda reverse kostundi, atla ne anta quick action undi. That's another, here, he used the image here, Indian rubber ball. Anangana manak mind logo to chesa rubber ball image ane di. Shadow image kodo manak already o chesa indi actual ga. Shadow, if I think children generally, if you look at children, they always observe the shadow and then they see, idi enti ni neti thirigi na thirigi tundi ane di. Sometimes they, they play with that actually. Yes or no? Yes. That's the beauty. As we grow, our priorities are different. We don't uh, uh, look at the smaller things which make us happy. That's why we are not happy. We forgot to be happy yes. because we are running after something which we do not know. We are not sure of. So, literature, poetry reminds us and uh, redirects us towards, you know, the life. So, anta chala meaning this coach. It is one kind of interpretation. And if you read this poem again second time, we get another meaning. That's the beauty of poetry. Yes. And <coughs> for he sometimes shoots up taller like an Indian rubber ball and he sometimes gets so little that there's none of him at all. Konisarlu, based on the lighting, sometimes you are nowhere, right? Sometimes you do a lot of work, your work is not recognized. Appreciation rale. Sometimes manak telukundane, and a joke but that will do some great service to people. Atla manam anko kunda jisna pane ke chala appreciation osta di, chala expect jisna ke reverse osta di. That's the philosophy of life. So every poet, especially, tries to take up that philosophy of life and depicts. Akadunna words, examples, avi just help. Kani dantlo inner meaning chala osta di. So sometimes it, it will love to grow, sometimes it will condense. And then another part of this poem is, one morning very early before the sun was up, I rose and found the shining dew on every buttercup, but my lazy little shadow, like an errant sleepy head, has stayed at home behind me and was fast asleep in bed. Why this shadow is not to be seen? This is a early morning. Shadow you can only see when there is light. You can see yourself when there is a person to observe. They say we do not know our strength, our weaknesses. We will only know our greatness, our special qualities when others express it. Why should we meet people and 
people will observe, some good people will observe positives and they will tell you. So, I light on the external force. Ante, na manchi I need some external force. Na shadow ante na image na name delival ante I need external force. A external force ikkada sunni vaadu Here, here, in our life it is people. People observe. If people are silent, then they are observing deeply. If people talk, they may not. So, in the absence of sun, in the absence of light, I don't see my shadow, myself. And the light ni knowledge good anuch. Are you getting the knowledge about yourself? And everyone has potentialities, and these potentialities are hidden. Under the skill untadi. Oka opportunity ochina puru matra me skill bite kosi. Opportunity ochcha varak anko thar nak skill le daan sag light ni untadi. And opportunity sudden ka ochcha sun untadi without knocking the door. Apurik manam ready unda malli. Are you getting me? Attention. <coughs> so, this kind of a philosophy of life they talk. Oka dhan thar ne chala me nindes thar. And if you read, you will get. It itla gudon thar chan mirgu thanochi. Ini malli jabi te. That's the beauty of poetry. Oka te interpretation, oka te summary unda thi. Are you getting me? How deep you can think. And it also depends on your mood. Your interpretation depends on your mood. Then that's the end of you know that wonderful poem, my shadow. So as we tried discussing the interpretation of this poem, in the examination, there is a possibility of asking, what did you understand from this shadow? Are you getting me? Okay. I mean, a uh, uh, questions manu meta discuss in why this particular you know. I point is mentioned. It's sun What is it? What do you understand? Sudden growth and the condensing, all these things. Have any questions of that? So, for this examination, we must understand the poem, all the poems, especially for this examination. Then we must question ourselves. What do they expect us to understand? That would be our potential questions in the examination. And the point. Because as we already discussed, we will get some questions on the background of the authors and the poets. We get some questions on the works of the poets and authors and we get another set of questions on the prescribed text that we have for this you know examination. Overall 38 and this <coughs> 18 poems, 14 prose collections and 6 plays. It and me the and definite 38 questions we can get if they take one question from it. 38 is not a simple you know number. And then let us go to the other poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson, very much celebrated poet of Victorian era, whom they brought her warrior dead. The title itself will give us some idea. Home they brought her warrior, warrior, a soldier, a fighter, dead soldier. I pen. There is a sad part of it. Another point, the beauty of literature and also poetry is, whatever happens in human's life, happiness or sorrow, conflict or crisis, everything will be taken and presented in the form of poetry. So, ikada title just there, what exactly he is talking about, a sad story of it. You will find love poetry, you will find uh, romantic poetry, you will find uh, death poetry, you will find uh, loss poetry, you will find everything that happens in one's life. So, let us look at this poem, Home They Brought Her Warrior Dead by Tennyson. First answer. Look at the first line. Then they praised him soft and low. We don't know who they are. They and Tevaro question Ravachitla. What do you mean by they here? Right? Him, who is this person here? The line, then they praised him soft and slow from whom they brought her warrior dead means 
and the theme could the other we can answer. Let us look at it. Then they praised him soft and low. Chala soft tone low, low tone low martyrdom. Because the title itself is telling us about the death of a soldier. Akada, loud voice low under Chala quiet voice low martyrdom. What did they say? They called him worthy to be loved. Ante, great man unde. Very unfortunate uh, you know, situation in our life that takes place is. We discussed this earlier also. Manishi Bhatkunanta Kalamu and the great Aina Guda and Sala Great Gadante and Chalaman in Jusnamante. A Manshi Poin Taravata, Ikakoni adjus good matter to Chala great on day as a put the Atlantic Manshi. And unfortunate thing is that man doesn't know that you loved him, you respected him, you valued him. So literature by talking about all these things tells indirectly us that. Whatever good you see, you observe, express it now, when they are very much alive. No point in talking about the greatness of the good death. But unfortunately, this happens. So, they called him worthy, they praised him. And he is no more. He is no more. He is no more. He He lost his life. Truest friend and noblest foe. Best friend. Friends are little chala. Best friend. Noblest foe, foe ante viro the enemy. Enemy aina guda ante anasaranga ayam shatrutam betko. Like a meaningful enemy. Are you getting me? Enemy is in a way actually he, in a harsh way though, in a harsh way, he tells us about our mistakes. Ida mere jaisindi, chala expect jaisna ante. You did not do your best ante. Though it, it hurts, but in a, in a way indirectly he is pointing out our mistake. Though the expression is painful. Are you getting me? So, truest friend and match kuna ranta. Noblest to four. Nan nishta pade ro, nan 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 but still chala respectful ga maantra de tunda apti. Yet, she neither spoke nor moved. So, who is she here? Tell you. Mottam poem javata gaan kuna sal ardham gaad. So, Muguru Chari kada first stanza lo. They, him, she. They are praising this man, but uh, the lady who is there, and now we should think of who could be this lady, and a soldier ki Most probably the wife, let us assume. Ikkada. Yet she neither spoke nor moved. great words She was not at all disturbed and not at all responding. Andar surprised Inta you are not happy. <coughs> First stanza. And then external feature is it has rhyme scheme here. Actually, we missed. Uh, <coughs> okay. Then another stanza. We missed one stanza, I guess. Mm -hmm. We will correct it maybe in the next episode. Second stanza. Stole a maiden. From her place, lightly to the warrior stepped, took the face cloth from the face, yet she neither moved nor wept. So, people are just, uh, you know, place observing the body and doing all kinds of things there. But uh, this lady who is there is not at all moved or disturbed and not at all crying. In pain, you have certain levels. When there is a great loss, and a konisar loss jargute, oka painful cry, eight chestar. Sometimes people don't cry, which is very dangerous. And if you don't have attachment towards that person, that's fine. But if you are very much attached to that person who is no more, if you are not crying, that's very dangerous. So, ikarugura and shock lo ondo Shock gura chala levels of shocks ondo. Poet observes the matter. But why this lady is not responding, not reacting? What's wrong with her? She should also say something. But a poet doesn't know how much pain that lady has. Sometimes we need not express our feelings, especially the pain. Yes or no? That too, when people do not understand. And the literature, you should not cry when others do not value your tears. 
మన కన్నీళ్ళకి వాల్యూ ఇవ్వని వాళ్ళ దగ్గర ఏడుస్తే ఎంత ఏడ్చినా కూడా లాభం ఉండదు ఎవరి దగ్గర ఏడవాలి ఎక్కడ ఏడవాలి అక్కడ ఏడవాలి అంతే సో ఇన్ ఇక్కడ కూడా వీ కెన్ అండర్స్టాండ్ మేబీ వై షీఈస్ నాట్ రెస్పాండింగ్ మేబీ ఆల్ దీస్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ మేబీ న్యూ పీపుల్ ఫర్ దర్ వీళ్ళు ఇంతకుముందు లేరే సడన్గా వచ్చారు ఇప్పుడు కావచ్చు వీ డోంట్ నో దెన్ రోజ్ ఎ నర్స్ ఆఫ్ నైంటీ ఇయర్స్ ఇంత జరుగుతుంటే వన్ నైంటీ ఇయర్స్ నర్స్ లేడీ కేమ్ అప్ సెట్ హిస్ చైల్డ్ అపాన్ హర్ నీ అక్కడ ఉన్న బేబీని తీసుకుని బేబీని తీసుకొని ఆ నీస్ మీద పెట్టుకుని లైక్ సమ్మర్ టెంపెస్ట్ కేమ్ హర్ టీయర్స్ షీ టూ డింట్ సే ఎనీథింగ్ సైలెంట్గా టీయర్స్ వర్ రోలింగ్ డౌన్ ఆ బేబీని పట్టుకుంది ఎందుకు బేబీని పట్టుకుంది వీ కెన్ అండర్స్టాండ్ హియర్ మేబీ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ద డెత్ ఆఫ్ దట్ సోల్జర్ నౌ ద చైల్డ్ ఈజ్ ఫాదర్లెస్ హెల్ప్లెస్ స్వీట్ మై చైల్డ్ ఐ లీవ్ ఫర్ దీ సో she only said one thing she did not talk about the dead person dead soldier she said only that one thing that sweet my child my sweet child i am here i should live for yourself to take care of you adokate maatladadu so this is this clearly depicts a soldier's dead body brought home and the scene over there we get that <coughs> and the very painful you know widow ikkada so here also we have a rhyme scheme if you can look at and external internal features we need to observe <coughs> then <coughs> if we can take <coughs> another poem for the discussion purpose by the greatest poet india has produced rabindranath tagore my mother let us quickly look at this first stanza it says i cannot remember my mother <coughs> only sometime in the midst of my play in every stanza we find the first line i cannot remember my mother i cannot remember anukuntune he is remembering mm-hmm. are the beauty of this particular poem but when will he remember only sometime in the midst of my play aartunnapudu sadan ga appudu gurtustadu ante aakalainapudu edo kavachu ledha debba daginnapudu a tune seems to hover over my play things eppudu aartunnapudu mother eppudu gurtustundi when he is playing mother is singing in the background ha ah, mother undi the tune of some song that she used to hum while rocking my cradle uya lo uttunnapudu oka paata and i remember ante whenever he sees these kind of images he recollects okati playing play things and then cradle second stanza he says i cannot remember my mother but when in the early autumn morning the smell of the huli flowers floats in the air the scent of the morning service in the temple comes to me as the scent of my mother so early morning autumn morning when flowers blossom fragrant flowers a special flower huli flower blossoms and the temple service early morning early morning temple mother uh, temple service avani prayer avani chestunnadi so that means you see ee image endu kistunnadu ante every action every event of his life he will remember mother <coughs> and i cannot remember my mother only when from my bedroom window i send my eyes into the blue of the distant sky i feel that the stillness of my mother's gaze on my face has spread all over the sky so mali window dagar kelina pudu mother gurtostundi annadu when he looks at the sky looks at the star so mother may not be physically alive then but every thing that mother gave him and every item that is associated with mother keeps on rem- reminding him about his mother star we generally say okay <coughs> dead people so whenever he sees looks at the s- sky star looking at him through the window he thinks that yes my mother is blessing me from 
the distance, long distance. And, and he's, in this poem talks about mother's love, affection in that. So this is one attempt to towards an analysis of this poem. And when we read, as we discussed earlier, that many times we understand the poem in its uh, truest uh, way, actually. So similarly, there are another you know, 15 poems that uh, all the candidates must try to analyze, interpret, and uh, you know, do well in the exam too. <coughs> right, Shinwas, you are was low. And the English low, any the kal test to na ya venti yes poem ne any the kal ko chalo achu. Yenni saar lo chadi the adi any the kal ko man kar don. Exactly. Ani gude chal chagga explain chesi na thank you so much. Okay. Idi ivalche T-Sat special live show. Keep watching T-Sat.